Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, but many other circuses during their long careers. Both of these gentlemen joined the circus at a very early age, actually for both of them nearly a century ago. But both of these gentlemen also had their daughters late in life. So starting with Bonnie, tell us a little bit about your dad's literally running away from home to join the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus almost 100 years ago. Uh, my father, Cal Nicholas, was uh, Greek, and he was born in Limnos, Bottom Creek, and um, he was uh, his mother, and he came to the United States and uh, lived in Connecticut, and uh, the Ringling Show wintered in um, Norwich, and that's where my father was from, and uh, he was 16, 16 years old, and his father was an alcoholic and a um, pretty mean guy. And he would hit my father so much on the side of the head that he became deaf in his left ear. Um, one day he was coming home and um, his mother, my Yaya, which is grandmother in Greek, said to him, today is the day he said he was going to kill you, um, literally. And, and my father was afraid and he had always, um, you know, frequented the shows and, and saw the, the Ringling Show when it came to um, Norwich. And he knew that that was the day that he was going to run away and join the circus. That's what he did. He went underneath the sidewalls to watch the show because, of course, he didn't have money to see the show. And then during the show, there was, um, you know, in the Elephant Act, um, nearly um, all the time, they end up um, going to the bathroom. And he saw a guy with a shovel behind the elephant. And he thought, you know what? I can do that job. So he took the elephant trainer and he asked him if he would be able to work and he would shovel all the poop down in the truck and they said sure and he lived in the, uh, uh, the menagerie, the um, animal menagerie and he began his uh, circus career there. He was with Ringling from 1927 to 1955. So, so Bonnie, you know, that's a, that's a great story. Uh, 1927, he was 16 years old. He joined the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus literally with a shovel. And I know uh, in his many years with the circus, he did a lot of different things. Uh, but in 1951, he became uh, the ringmaster and, uh, and he was uh, an amazing guy. Now, Stacia Kelly, your father also, I mean, even more than a hundred years ago, uh, he saw his first circus and uh, kind of made his way uh, as a trapeze artist to start with, right? That's right. He saw, well, he saw the circus wagons crossing the back of uh, the family farm in uh, Houston, Missouri. And um, I think he was up in a tree at the time and just thought, wow, that's going someplace really cool and far away places and just start dreaming. But he really had a dream of being a cartoonist. And he took correspondence classes um, out of uh, the, the family kitchen. And um, his mother really encouraged that. Anyway, long story short, he went away to cartooning school and um, developed this character on the drawing board in like 1932. And I don't know, he just started playing with the idea of getting to know that little guy and drew inspiration from the depression and the bums on the railroads. and. Um, eventually was given a chance to um mm -hmm. good. <laughs> uh, Ms. Arlene, I must say you have identified the line of our guest. Would you guess now as to who it might be just for fun? Well, the first clown's name that comes to my mind is Emmett Kelly. And Emmett Kelly it is. You've been making him look sadder and sadder. Oh, Emmett, I am sorry. And you know, I understood you're not, not allowed to speak with your makeup on, are you, Emmett? And it was very hard for him to say, mm, even, wasn't it, Emmett? <laughs> <laughs> John, John, give yes, him the $50. He's yes, ma'am, no and problem he's got a at all. Bank. There it goes. <laughs> John, yes, would you make up like this next week? Would I make up like this next week? Actually, I'd try it if I thought I could come out this well, but I probably just look dull. Kelly has a certain wonderful talent, all of his own, that makes that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he's got that talent. There's no question about that. Pretty good. Same Taylor. Same Taylor. Huh? <laughs> 
Saint Barbara. Christian <laughs> Dior. Yes, Fred. Uh, he looks like a sponsor I used to work for. <laughs> You mean, Fred, that the sponsor that you used to work for looks like this now? Uh, after I left. Him, after yes. you left. <laughs> I would just say one serious word. I had a lot of fun working with the circus last year and met Mr. Kelly then. And he's a very remarkable gentleman. I suppose his modesty is, in a way, uh, born into him, but it's enforced also by his silence. He was a cartoonist. He's a fine writer, beside being probably the greatest clown there is today. And um, we think it was wonderful of you to come and stand little time with us, and I'm sorry And he's a daddy, it. too. He has a little clown. He's a daddy and has a little clown, too. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Mr. Kelly, for all of us, may I say thank you? Wonderful to have you with us. And we... So, that little clown is with us right now. <laughs> Stacia. So, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what it was like. I mean, your father was probably the most famous clown, but to you, he was just your dad, right? That's right. That's right. And I was pretty clueless um, growing up. Uh, you know, it was my dad. He happened to work around circuses. So I was very much at home under the big top or in a nightclub studio where perhaps he had uh, a, a gig. We spent a lot of time in Lake Tahoe at Harris Club every summer. Um, he was on TV. Um, he did uh, an opera. He did a lot of He was in every end of show business, actually. So, you know, I just, tagged around with him and our family traveled a lot. And uh, it wasn't really till a, a lot later, like maybe even when I went away to college where I realized that people in all different kinds of situations knew who he was. And um, it's it's been such a blessing for me over the years because he's been gone over 40 years to have people hold that special place in their hearts for my dad. And when they find out, which I really don't broadcast, but they find out and they just say, oh my gosh, you know, he was so special to me. So that for me, that's been so beautiful because it's kept him alive all these years. Uh, well, Bonnie, I'm not gonna let you get away with uh, not having your, showing your dad on television too. This next uh, segment here is from a, uh, about 1960. And uh, Count Nicholas and uh, actually Bonnie's sister appeared on the program to tell the truth. And if you remember that show, they would have uh, two imposters and one person who was actually the right the right person. In this case, the ringmaster, uh, Count Nicholas. So um, I would like to kind of ask you a little bit about how you actually appeared in the circus with uh, the father of Washington, D.C. You went down to see him down there, I guess, when you were in college, you went down. I know you were in the Sailor Circus too, right? I was in the Sailor Circus in Sarasota, which is a circus for kids in grade school and uh, trains up a lot of great circus performers. Uh, Dolly Jacobs is in charge of it right now, if you know Dolly, Lou Jacobs' daughter. Um, anyway, yes, uh, Circus America was a really neat show that brought together a lot of big performers, Carl Walenda and um, I'm not sure, was your dad there, Bonnie, Count Nicholas? Was he at Circus America in Washington? Anyway, they played um, in about 1974 in Washington. And so my mom and dad were at the show and I got to come down from college in New Hampshire and uh, participate. I got to ride my first elephant there. That was pretty There you go. That's yeah, that's what that's what I was fun. thinking about fun. when you rode that elephant. Well, that's Bonnie. I know you uh, you rode a lot of elephants in your day, too. Uh, you traveled with your dad, uh, not only uh, on the Beatty Cole Circus, but also uh, on some of the carnivals, right? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Um, in uh, 76 and 77, I traveled with dad with the Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers Circus in the summers only. You know, I was in school. School was very important to my father. Um, and um, I was a showgirl. I did aerial ballet, um, you know, this Spanish web and ladder. And then I was also the rubber girl. And my father would make the trip, uh, which was sort of fun because I would stand out on the dolly, which is the stage, and I would have a, a cape on and try to look as serious as possible. And my father would stand there and he would know, call the people to get closer to the stage, and then he would say something like, now mind you, I was the rubber girl, so this is the pitch. Look, watch, wait a minute. You can pull our skin out six to eight inches, let it snap, pop back like a rubber band. And that's they wanted to see me and the sword flower and the fire eater and the snake lady and everything else that we had to offer. They 
come in and then they could actually see me um, in the blade box, which was um, the box that the rubber girl went into and, and moved all around. I stepped by the blade, the bash, it was an extra four. There you go. You got it. It depends on the end. Uh, as, 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 oh, as the girl. elephant girl, no. You don't. No. Good. Um, well, if you were going to play in Paris, where would you play count number one? At the Medrano. Oh, good. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> Tom Poston, please. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Rosalie number three, what was the name of the bear act you worked in? Rosalie's uh, uh, bear. Pardon me? Rosalie's bear. <laughs> Why didn't you wear your costume tonight? Uh, count number two, please. What is the Spanish web in a circus? That's the rope with the covered, coated for the girls to climb up, or the men, either one. Thank you. Uh, Rosalie, number two, what is the traditional call for help in a circus, especially in the case of a fight? Oh, hey, Rube. That's it. On the note of hey, Rube, it's time to vote without consultation once again. Will you mark your ballots and vote for number one, team number two, or team number three? All set, everybody? Polly, you must... This show's getting harder and harder. <laughs> I, I tell you that I really... Well, for whom have you, oh, uh, uh, you voted? For oh, and he's going like vote? this, like I should hurry. Yes, you should hurry. Oh, all right. All right. For whom did you vote? Which well, team? I'm positive it's number three, because they, they really, because they, but, well, then but why number you three. Well, for number three? Well, because she didn't know what ten what? whatever it was, was. You don't want, okay, you don't want to vote for number three, you vote for number two. Okay. No, I'd change it. No. Now, do what you like. I, Make it quick, though. All right, I'll vote for number three. Number three. You're voting for number if three. If I'm wrong, I'm Okay, Ralph Bellamy, again. please. Number three. Mainly on the way they, uh, um, answer to their names and the uh, speed with which they answered the question. Hey, Kitty, your vote? Well, I voted for number one. I think it's number three, too, but on the basis of their profiles, I voted for, they look more like father and daughter sideways. Okay, and Tom Post. <laughs> I voted for number two. The, the Spanish web is a very uh, significant uh, circus term, and he answered it quickly. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to ask the number two people a little more questions, but I think it's number two. Okay, thank you very much. There we have the votes in. Mine's been up. Let's see whether we're right or wrong. And which of these father and daughter teams are the real Count and Rosalie Nicholas? Now, will the real Count Nicholas please introduce his daughter? <laughs> High above the center ring. 580 Cole Brothers Combined Circus proudly presents the Queen of the Big Top, beautiful Rosalie Nicholas. <laughs> well, that's great. And, you know, oh, uh, I think that one of the great things about that, too, is that uh, I mean, that was Bonnie's sister, Rosalie. But uh, obviously, you know, they were very proud of their daughters, uh, and both of them. And uh, when you think, uh, Stacia, about, you know, kind of those days, and we talked about it, whether you were uh, at Harrah's or whether you were, uh, you know, visiting with your dad uh, on one of the circuses that he was at, um, what was the response that people would give when you would, you know, when you would see your dad out there performing? Well, they usually never knew who I was. And I see my sister has joined us online. She doesn't have her camera on, but uh, she could probably help me if she would turn her mic on. Um, <laughs> We, you know, we watched him and, you know, the crowds just, they really loved him and they responded beautifully to him. And we just kind of were like a couple little mice with my mom, just watching with everybody else. But it it gave me so much pride. And, and now looking back on those years, it's like, how blessed was I to have that kind of a magical childhood to watch people just really be moved by what he was doing on stage or in the spotlight. Um, it was extraordinary. And it still is. I'm on a Zoom call with you guys or <laughs> teams or whatever. This is so fun. 
So, um, you know, your your father obviously um, was taken from you when you were still pretty young. Um, Bonnie, I know that your dad, um, you know, he he lived to be 90 and he was pretty much out there the entire time, wasn't he? Yep. Oh, yeah. He worked nonstop till he was 85. Um, and uh, then, you know, he was getting slowed down and he went into the uh, nursing home. And he was very upset about that. He said he had nothing in common with people. And the only thing that he really enjoyed doing there was, you know, talking about the circus and telling everyone about his life. But he loved to play bingo because that was the closest to gambling that he could get to. <laughs> and on all the shows that we were on, um, he was always the G-Top manager, which is um, the gambling tent, G-Top. So yeah. at the end of the night... A lot of the workers and, and performers and whoever wanted to come over and play uh, poker, uh, <laughs> my father was uh, the dealer. That's great. That's a great story, you know, uh, and and of course, you know, I think I hope you could hear Bonnie there, but she was saying that uh, her dad uh, kind of was uh, he was a hustler, right, Bonnie? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he looked for opportunities. I know even years later, uh, you know, he had this 1966 Ford step van that traveled from coast to coast as he would uh, go with the, the James A. Straits Carnival or, you know, uh, the Beatty Cole Circus. And it was a moving pie car. It was an opportunity for the working men on the show to find a place where they could get a cold can of beer. And it was Count Nicholas who sold it to him. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And. And as you said, uh, so in that, I'm sorry, go ahead. In that uh, Ford step van, um, you know, uh, when I went to visit Dad in the summer of '76 and '77, everybody else had motorhomes, trailers, and all like this. And Dad said he, had, you know, he loved that van. All he would do was change out the motor. He kept the van, but you know, there was no running water in that van. So very often he would make friends with with so many people, but especially with circus fans. He loved circus fans. And before you know it, after the show, we're at someone's home, and we're having dinner, and I'm taking a shower, and it was fabulous because, I mean, you know, I would do the bucket water thing if I had to, but if Dad met a fan and we could go to their house and eat and drink and take a nice shower, it was that much better. We have a question. Our first question comes to us from JJ and Patty. Come on, you. I got it. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. Andrew, ahead, Patty. I was just wondering if you guys had met before when you were little, Stacia and Bonnie. Bonnie, did we? I don't think so. We may have, it may have been in passing. We knew of each other, and then my friend um, Heidi was good friends with Stacia and Monica. And she was the one who was the best friend with Stacia and Monica. And so I, I, and I talked about them and knew of them, but I don't think that we actually were on the same show together or or knew each other when we were little but i will tell you a story folks uh that even though maybe you didn't know each other um monica and stacia's mother evie who i actually think might be on this call right now uh evie is from germany and uh your mother was from germany too right bonnie that's right and so they had this thing in common because they had both been on the ringling show back in the uh, 1950s. And so when Stacia was born, Evie told me that uh, Bonnie's mother rode her bicycle over to her house and actually helped take care of little baby Stacia. So yeah, there was uh, definitely a connection there. And listen, um, Bonnie's good friend, Heidi, is the daughter of Ushi Frimberger, who was my mother's very best friend from Germany. They came to America together in the same tumbling act and came to Ringling together. And so, and they're still best friends today. Right, so Mom? I know <laughs> The four whirlwinds and Ushi Frimberger and Evie uh, Kelly Lentz, uh, like you said, they've been friends uh, for a long, long time. Right, Evie? I know you can hear me. Uh, do we have any other questions uh, from anyone that's out there? It looks like Kathy uh, has a question for us. So, Kathy, if you can unmute yourself. When your mom talk about your dad, what is the favorite story that she likes to tell about him in his private times, not on stage but off stage? That my mother likes so to we'll tell start about with, him? We'll start mm -hmm. with Stacia, and then I'm going to change the question a little bit for Bonnie, but that's a great question, Kathy. 
What's the favorite story that my mother, oh, okay, about when they met. That's probably the best story of all. Uh, my mom's tumbling act before Whirlwinds would perform at the Ringling Show, and my dad took a, a shine to them kind of early on, and he would come around with his cabbage and, and sweep around the ring. And this was really, you know, in, when he was just starting to be allowed to roam the circus tent, and some acts didn't really like it because they thought it took away from their act. But then they finally realized that it actually brought more attention to their act. So he was bringing attention to the four whirlwinds and he, he took a liking to my mom. So they would chit chat a little bit. He was in makeup and she was in costume. And then um, they got friendlier and he asked her out one day. And so they decided to meet in the back lot and go have a beer. Um, after the show. And so they they were out there getting ready to meet. My mom looked around and she realized she had never seen him without his makeup on. So she didn't know really who she was looking for. And so she said to one of the little midget performers, do you know Emma Kelly? And, and he said, he's standing right behind you. And she looked around and there he was and she recognized his brown eyes and the rest is history. That's a great story. Thank you, Stacia. So, Bonnie, I'm going to kind of change it a little bit uh, for you, but a similar type of question. I mean, your dad was there, you know, he was in the for in there in the 40s. Fred Bradna was, I know, his idol. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of his recollections, things that he told you about his days on the circus. Well, he was, um, he was a little bit started out uh, talking on the sideshow ballet. I do know that. And I remember him saying that Fred Bragna was his idol. He would look and listen to everything that Fred said, and then he would go home and he would practice, and he would practice, and he would practice. His given name from Greece is Amongulos Nicolakis, and he would always so when they when they played New York, he would always visit the finest uh, men's tailors, and he always had the nicest shoes and the nicest clothes, and he was always dressed so debonair and dashing. And um, when Fred Bradna started teaching him, he said, "You know what? You look like a count, so your name mm -hmm. is Count Nicholas." And from that moment on, it was Count Nicholas, and that's how we've always been remembered. That's a great story. So he was the count, and Fred Bradna gave him that name. That's right. That's great. Well, um, folks, we, we wanted to keep this at about 30 minutes. I'm sure we must have some more questions out there. Uh, do you have, is there anybody who has a, a question? Uh, that ooh, they uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any additional questions? Um, well, I'll throw a couple more. I'll, actually, I'll do a little commercial here for the Circus Historic. Uh, there's, one little, there's one little thing that I, I want to let you know. When when um, we built our home in Sarasota, Florida in, in uh, 59, it's on four acres of land. And uh, my dad, you know, very often in the, in the winter time when the show was on, off the road, we would have flying riggings out in our backyard. We would have elephants, you know, all, you know all kinds of people would come and visit, and, and my father, when I was like five, made me a little tiny trapeze. As I got older, oh. I had a 30 foot rigging in my backyard, but he made me, a, or he had a big, he didn't make it, he had a little trapeze made for me, and right away, I knew enough to know that when he announced me in my own backyard, oh. I had to be announced as Lenorma. Lenorma. <laughs> I would make him now announce me as Lenorma, which he was more than happy to do, so that was a little memory from when I was younger that, that I to my That's head. a great story. Uh, Chris, I need to explain who Lenorma is. Right. So Lenorma Fox, who uh, a lot of you may know, uh, still living uh, down in Sarasota, one of the great trapeze artists, of, especially of the 1950s and, and early 1960s. And uh, she was someone who your dad would, uh, would actually announce on a regular basis, both uh, on Ringling and then later on the Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers Circus. So uh, just a little bit of a commercial here for the Circus Historical Society. I think that uh, we took a look at about about 30 percent of the people who are on this call are not members of the CHS. And uh, I would urge you to consider joining. Uh, the website is circushistory.org. And uh, not only are we going to be presenting these uh, 
these types of events, but you also get our quarterly magazine bandwagon, which is, uh, it's like an art magazine. I mean, it's really uh, very well put together. There are newsletters about what's happening in the circus world right now. I see uh, Patty there is giving her little uh, heart that she uh, likes a bandwagon, I guess. Uh, but also uh, we have a bookstore where we have circus books and other uh, things that are available to the membership. Uh, Circushistory.org is the, is the website. There's a button up there, by the way, that says donate. And if you feel as though uh, today's experience is worth uh, giving a couple of bucks uh, to the CHS, it helps us do things like pay for the software, which I will promise you I will get to uh, take better care of for our next call. Maybe um, it takes you to take a lesson, huh? <laughs> uh, there you go. There you can pay for that. I, I do appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, if we have no further questions, uh, I, I really want to thank uh, not only Stacia Kelly and Bonnie Nicholas Shine, but also uh, Bruce Hawley of the CHS, Kristen Lee, who's the treasurer who uh, helped arrange for uh, this today. Uh, check out circushistory.org, the website. Uh, we will continue to do things like this. Uh, thanks again, folks. Bye, Stacia. Bye. Bye, Bonnie. Everybody. Love and, you. And thanks. You thank you. Thanks Bye. for joining Bye. us today. Thank you. So Bye. long.